So today I wanted to take a look at SharePoint audit logs and how to read audit log data in JavaScript over a REST API. Uh, the product comes with a server object model for accessing this. It's the SP audit query. However, we don't have a great way of running that on the front end from JavaScript because it's not part of the REST APIs yet. If you go to the site settings menu and come down to site collection audit settings, you have all these checkboxes for opening, editing, check in, check out, delete, and so forth. So if we turn this on, give it a number of days, hit OK, and do some activity on our site, what we'll see over here on the content database which backs that is there's a table called audit data, has a number of columns, and we start collecting all these events with GUID numbers and times and you know, path to, to particular file and, and view and whatnot in the libraries. It even has the user, some event data and XML and just a, a lot of really detailed information. And just to get an idea, I mean this is a local test site collection on my virtual machine and it's got 2,000 records in it. And I'm, I'm the only one using it and just did a few things to upload a few files and browse around the site. Uh, but when you turn on audit, you can collect a lot of data very quickly. Now I think there are a few indexes on the table. Yep, here we go. Uh, and that may help us with query performance, but just keep an eye on the size of this one because it can certainly grow substantial quickly. Now coming over to Visual Studio, I made a new web API project and spun up one controller, called it Audit Controller, and went ahead and put down a few things here. I created a class named audit param which are the parameters for how we want to filter data so here we have the URL of the site a row limit a title of a given list the ID number of a single item a particular user we're looking for a start and end time range and then finally an enumeration of the audit event types so you know you can leave these out they're all optional the more you provide the more specific the query will become and here we have a link out to the SP audit query Taking a look at the MSDN page for SP Audit Query, uh, this sort of outlines how we can do the filters and what the different members are. So if we come into this one, what we'll see are there's different things for a row limit, maximum number of rows, an event restriction for types of events, restrict it to one list, restrict to one item, restrict to one user, the start and end time ranges, but a lot of different parameters we can use to kind of filter this query and make it more specific. So I mimicked all of that in creating this param class, which allows us to, to post over some parameters and, and make a more specific query. So the, the get method will echo back an empty parameter set just to kind of show how it likes to communicate. The post method will receive parameters, open a connection to the site and the web object, spin up a new audit query to that site collection, because keep in mind, the audit data is per site collection. So in the table structure we have site ID, it's very site collection oriented. Uh, these settings themselves are part of the site collection admin. So when we're talking audit, we, we need to be thinking site collection. And here we basically have if the parameter is specified, go ahead and add it to the query. A few different data type conversions and casting, so like looking up a list title, turning it into an SP list as a way of invoking the restrict to list item and kind of walking down the the chain here of different parameters and then we get to SP audit event type these are all the different types of events that could come up so I, I kinda of made a string to enumeration conversion for each one of those and we go ahead and add all those different types and down at the very end we get entries based on the query so we're, we're building up this query adding more and more filters we execute the query and return a data type. So that's, I mean, that's kind of the quick code review of it. Uh, really, we're trying to invoke SP audit query and get a collection of audit entry collection. And that that will be our return data type to, to come back as JSON. So Logic will press F5 to go ahead and run. And that's going to spawn localhost with an IIS Express and the README homepage of the site. Gives a little bit of instruction build number and some examples on usage. If I come over to Fiddler and bring that exact URL, I can go ahead and execute a get and we'll see a 200 for the home page. But if I add lowercase API, 
capital A for audit, then I'm invoking the get method over here, which should echo back our usage parameters. If I F8 to inspect, toggle the JSON, sure enough, there's all of our usage. Now if we come back over and we post, and we'll tell it that we'll accept application JSON, and we'll go ahead and give it a content type for what we plan to post. Then we can provide a JSON body down here and include a link to the site we want to get auditing for. Okay, awesome. So when we invoke that request, we get 27K coming back. And if we do F8 to inspect it, come over here to JSON, what we're going to see is a, an array with all of these different events in them. They have the item ID, the location, site ID, um, all kinds of information about what event occurred, who, when, the user principal, um, you know, the location to that particular document any event data in XML. So essentially a download of that SQL table we were looking at earlier, but now we're doing it coming in, you know, over the, uh, the, the REST interface. So a lot of different things we could do here, you know, filtering by event types, filtering for specific users or items. Um, in this case, I had it just echo back the entire site, which is kind of a lot of information. But by doing a post, we can provide all the filters we want in the body. The documentation of those filters is kind of over here in the code itself with the audit param and a link back to Microsoft site. But more parameters we give it, the more filtering, the faster it'll run, and the less data we receive. But this gives us a way to now view audit logs coming in over a REST API. So now we can take that and go to jQuery or Angular on the front end, create a GUI, you know, start and end dates, couple filter drop downs, and when the user hits submit, we can post to this API, bring back that raw JSON and, and format it in a table. So something a little more precise than the site settings to download for the uh, entire collection. So thanks for watching and hope you find it useful.